Simon, moving forward, we're talking about the role of innovation in COVID-19 when it comes to product, price, place, promotion, or people. Now, while it's usually the role of agencies to curate content for brands, and they continue to do so, this discussion will be focused on how are brands themselves transforming in these challenging times? How are they innovating and inventing through new products, packaging, or simply collaborations? What difference are brands doing and what are their learnings? All of this will be spoken in this very panel discussion. We have some of the stalwarts of the industry coming together on this very panel. So I hope all of you are ready. I would like to see some uh, excitement going on in the chats, how all of you are doing. Give us some thumbs up, how excited you are, because this is one of the big one here. Let me now introduce to you all our panelists. Arwin RP, Director of Marketing and Communications, McDonald's. Very warm welcome to you, sir. Thanks a lot. Happy to be here. Atik Mehta, Marketing Head, Think and Learn Private Limited. Welcome to you too. Welcoming Avi Kumar, Head Marketing Z5. A very warm welcome, Mr. Kumar. Hi. Thank you for inviting me here. Gaurav Jeet Singh, General Manager, Media South Asia, HUL. Very warm welcome, sir. Welcoming Nipun Maria, Director, Brand Strategy, Vivo India. Very warm welcome to you, sir. Hi, how are you? Very well. Jayam Vora, Co-Founder and COO, Fraternity. Very warm welcome, sir. Hi, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Sandeep Janeja, Vice President, Sales and Marketing, DHL Express. Very warm welcome, sir. Happy to be here. Thank you. And to session this chair, uh, I mean, to chair this session, I would like to uh, introduce to all our viewers and our panelists, of course, you know him, the co-founder and director of Exchange for Media, Mr. Nawal Ahuja. Warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you, Jati. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, for doing this, uh, uh, you know, lockdown. Thank you, all the panelists. I'm uh, glad. Glad to see you all. Uh, hi, and uh, as I was going through the list of uh, the panelists we have, I realized that we have people from across all the categories that we need during lockdown. You know, we have HUL, uh, which you know uh, we need for our uh, daily requirements. We have Z5; we can't do without uh, you know entertainment at home. We we have a fitness brand here. Uh, obviously, in the lock during lockdown, most important Vivo communication. Of course, we can't live without. And Baiju's and uh, McDonald's food and uh, you know online learning. So you know it kind of completes the entire. I don't know whether Michelle intended it for for it to be like this, but it has turned out. I'm 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 glad. So uh, before we start, uh, you know, as you know that this uh, entire uh, uh, series of sessions have been about uh, what uh, are the new things happening in content marketing. Uh, and uh, one of the things that COVID has done is uh, it has kind of accelerated the pace of. Uh, content curation content marketing uh in the last two months because you know uh, adversity as this is the mother of uh, new ideas invention uh, uh new thoughts and a lot of us have been uh, pushed and challenged into thinking and coming up with new stuff so let me start with my co-panelists and ask you one uh, very simple question tell us one uh, very interesting things uh, thing each one of you has done in the last these two months uh, in terms of engaging with your customers, which is, you know, obviously related to content. Can we start with you, Gaurav? Sorry, I was on mute. I was hoping to come in uh, last on this one after having heard everybody else, but let me give it a shot. I think uh, the biggest, uh, uh, you know, the very interesting piece that came through when it, on content piece, the most surprising thing that I found at least in the last Two months has been what's happened to uh, our belief in God, right? I mean, it's just gone through the roof. If you see any genre, uh, any TG that you might cut at, uh, somehow Ramayana, Mahabharat, uh, and the entire uh, uh, pantheon of uh, the Indian gods has been on air at the same time and kicking the TRPs out of the park. So nothing. Somebody beats, was joking uh, that day when life is in danger, we all we all remember God. Absolutely. Very interestingly, I think the interesting bit is that uh, that takes care of a large part of India. But if you really, uh, I also have managed Pakistan, Bangladesh, and uh, very interestingly, the serial that is doing very well, or TV uh, uh, episodes that are doing very well and also available in India is something called Lit to Good, 
which is uh, which is a Turkish uh, series. I don't know if you have caught it. It's got 99 episodes, five seasons, so 500 odd series. So anybody wants to sit through uh, the current COVID crisis, will will uh, can uh, sit through that. So hence, I think the one big uh, metric about our belief in as Eastern cultures and uh, is around uh, belief in God and uh, and dependence on that is really strong. And when you speak to consumers, there's almost a certain uh, fatalism uh, in that in terms of saying that yes uh, i don't know how it'll get right but it will get right so there is a certain optimism and and uh, and belief that they will be taken care of i think uh, that is one piece on content that how how this particular vector however old it might be however dated and uh, has come in and and just uh, taken consumers by storm i think the second big learning in this period has been your point novel that uh, you know in times like this, you see a lot of innovation. And I think the second piece is that the way uh, a lot of work that we did around uh, Lifebuoy, Corona, and, and use of uh, or TikTok for that matter, That's right. the kind of scale that we managed was tremendous. So that was a big learning again for us in terms of limitations that we thought we need these big studio houses to create, create the kind of content that can go out at the scale of brands that we have. Uh, and the rapidity with which that create uh, could be created, an amount of uh, uniformity and regimentation that could be followed on, on that was really powerful learning. And finally, I think uh, there is a, it is amazing how similar um, our uh, our love for content is. And same things trended trended in India at the same time, whether it was money heist uh, or any other piece uh, piece that really became big on a certain TG. It just shows that there's something about content that has nothing to do with language or any other barrier that can cut through uh, cut through uh, populations mm -hmm. and and be relevant in spite of it not being in the language that you can speak. So just the universality of great content is uh, is what was a big learning in a time like this. And of course, you can have, do all this over a cup of nice brew made Delgona coffee. So for thanks for giving me an opportunity to plug in two three brands as we spoke. But that's what I get. In fact, for. I'm told uh, uh, Lifeboy also created a partnership with Swiggy, and your TikTok yeah. campaign has been uh, uh, that's the first instance of Lifeboy using uh, TikTok as a platform globally. What you've done in India. That's right, Navel. Well, it's the first instance of Unilever brand globally using TikTok at the kind of scale. Uh, and I think the other pieces, Swiggy and other pieces under Roots to Market, are really powerful way of uh, of managing. The kind of disruption that we've seen in physical distribution, the kind of uh, uh, disruption we've seen in uh, in the regular ways of reaching consumers for even our advertising. So that disruption uh, and how can we really uh, manage it and uh, manage uh, creatively uh, to reach consumers both physically and mentally in a time like this has been a big learning That's and very humbling experience, really, Frank. Let me hop on to Avi Kumar. You know, we've all been at homes watching more TV. Uh, consuming more OTT. So obviously, uh, you know, I'm sure Z5's uh, uh, daily consumption has gone through the roof as well. So what are, uh, what are, what, what are the other things you're doing Avi as Z5 to engage more deeply with consumer? Because uh, as we all know, demand for your product is going up. You don't have any distribution issues, except the fact that, you know, some internet providers have reduced bandwidth, but does not, that does not materially impact you. So what are the ways for a OTT platform to kind of sell more of it. We also know that increased consumption is not yet completely translating into in increased revenues because advertisers have lesser money to spend. But are there some interesting things you've done that you that you, you want to tell our, uh, our panel and the audience? Sure, sure, Nabil. Uh, so Z5 has undergone a remarkable evolution, if you see, in the last two years, where we've pursued uh, a vision to become uh, one of the nation's destination as a super app for entertainment and uh, one of the most profound changes over this time has been that uh, we've got a very rich understanding and deeper commitment towards delighting the customer so that's become a norm for the company and there's only one focus at the moment which is consumer so what are we doing right now we are uh, focusing on hyper personalization to mix brand content along with technology and focusing on everything that is essential and that is the consumer. We've, we have uh, we've put up tools and we've put up technology to understand the consumer at an N equal to one level so that we can connect better with the consumer. And in this unprecedented time, it becomes even more important for us to give the, to understand what the consumer needs and delight him with that content. 
So when I say Z5 is a super app, we have a lot of use cases. We have uh, introduced kids in the last one month. We have introduced uh, uh, hyper shots. Uh, we've come up with uh, gaming, hyper, hyper casual gaming uh, on the app. Uh, news as a cluster has been, uh, ha has been improved and a 3.0 version has been released. We've come up with a lot of uh, content innovation, whether it is from a perspective of uh, uh, live or it is uh, it is shows which are shot in house, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the key is the consumer and hyper personalization for the consumer. So while there is one lakh twenty five thousand hours of content, but for us it is important to provide the consumer what he is looking for without him want, like, looking for it. So that's the key. Yeah, you know, I think that's a very good point. Yeah, for especially a media tech company, hyper personalization, and then uh, providing advertisers the ability to ride on that. Because I think as we go along, as this crisis peters out, and as economic activity starts, at least for the next few quarters, hyper personalization and geo targeting will become a very important aspect. And you know, for brand like, uh, let me go across to Nikun uh, now and talk about Vivo. Your category has obviously been impacted, uh, Nikun, and primarily for the fact that. Uh, you know, uh, because of significant logistical uh, disturbances, you uh, shops are not open, retailers are shut, uh, you're not able to get your phones across. So I have, I have, my question has two parts to you. One is during times like these when naturally you are uh, not really investing uh, significant money in brand building, uh, presumably content plays a, a, content marketing plays an important part of the piece in terms of reaching out to customers. So what have you done to kind of keep that engagement going? And the second part uh, to my question is, which obviously I will then uh, post your answer, come across to everybody else, is that how do you, how soon do you see a category like yours restarting the brand building activities that you were doing pre COVID? Okay. Yeah. Hi Nabal. Uh, hi. And uh, hello to everybody else also. Uh, see uh, the first part uh, of your question uh, on what we've seen, are really you know different uh, is that uh, in the last one one and a half months uh, we clearly saw that the trend of people you know really looking forward to you know a product or a feature uh, or product advertising in general in our category especially uh, there was much less interest uh, in product advertising uh, the interest completely shift because nobody was really looking to buy a phone uh, there weren't any options available to buy it. Shops were closed. E-commerce companies uh, also, there was no delivery for a large part of, uh, of the lockdown. So people were genuinely not interested in, uh, in going out there and checking out product features. And therefore, from, from the brand side also, they weren't really interested uh, in us communicating too much uh, about product features. However, what the consumers were really interested was what are we doing with respect to coronavirus, uh, what message do we have at a larger level uh, for the society? Uh, that's what people were genuinely, genuinely interested in. Are there any CSR efforts which the company is undertaking? So when we put out such communication, which was on CSR, uh, which was about uh, you know a, a, a video which we made on heroes who care, uh, saluting uh, all our you know policemen, factory uh, policemen and healthcare workers. Those kinds of uh, videos and content really got a lot of engagement. So very less interest on product a lot of interest uh, yeah. on CSR and other social issues. So that's, uh, that's the first part on what we've really seen. Uh, that's, that was, you know, the lockdown 1.0, 2.0 and, uh, you know, partly 3.0 also. Now, when we uh, entered the 4.0, uh, what we've seen is, is a real shift because as market has started opening up, people have again gone back to buying phones. Uh, and therefore we have seen uh, sort of a restart uh, in smartphone sales. And we can talk about it uh, more, you know, in in the coming few uh, questions. But we have started seeing uh, sales reviving, and because the sales have started to revive, uh, what we've also seen is people are now uh, more interested to know about features which they weren't interested in a couple of weeks back. So tell me, uh, since a lot of people listening to this conversation are primarily from the content curation, content marketing domain, do you foresee a scenario where, say, the next two three quarters, since uh, financials of uh, majority of the Indian corporates are uh, adversely impacted. Do you see uh, parts of marketing money uh, going from mainline media, at least in the interim term, uh, more towards good content ideas because, you know, television by nature of it is obviously more expensive to do. And you might not have that kind of money available. Sure. So, see, you are, you're right. Uh, when it comes to content, uh, and uh, this was always... Uh, 
you know on the horizon just that i think this lockdown has precipitated uh, the uh, you know the the realization of the importance of good content uh, i certainly believe uh, that now and going forward the whole age uh, of push marketing uh, will have to will have to change uh, towards you know pull marketing uh, where consumer is interested uh, he will seek out seek you out uh, he will find out information about you you don't have to necessarily uh, be in the face of the consumer most of the times uh, and i think that's uh, that is uh, the shift we will see from industrial age marketing uh, to digital age marketing right so atit you you uh, have a brand you are in a uh, envious position of being uh, you know uh, i remember uh, uh, 20 years back there used to be a case study about 911 where you know they tried to kind of demarket the service too many people were calling i'm sure byju's is also kind of uh, you know right now overloaded with demand and you know you are kind of ramping up your back end what does a brand like you which is uh, inundated with uh, demand do in times like these do, wh- why do you need to engage with customers when they are coming to your shop front in droves anyway yeah hey navel uh, so you know two things uh, happened in the last uh, 65 70 days so pre lockdown levels if you look at it there was a lot of uh, excitement happening on the pre recorded content and over here content i'm talking about the very serious hardcore academic content and as the lockdown started the first thing to shut was schools and the last thing to open up as the economy and the markets open up is going to be school so school is at the two ends of the spectrum now and this is also the start of the academic season most of the boards whether it's a cbse board icsc board state boards most of them some parts of the country starts around may june post the april final examination and that's the core of any start of any education season so what actually happened is that most of the schools and especially the a plus schools the metro schools where we send our kids those schools started doing online classes using multiple platforms and google classroom became a go to market product for most of them but that's not even 0.1% of the total population in terms of schools or school going students so the big content uh, initiative which the business created and that's where the number started stacking up is starting live classes because at the end of the day everything has gone up ott consumption has gone up tv viewership has gone up gaming has gone up and parents and students parents and kids both being at home 24 by 7 it was just becoming difficult for them to manage how much are you going to watch now if somebody is able to provide educational content in a live format with one of the best teachers and that's exactly what we ended up doing and that is the surge which we saw both in terms of engagement both in terms of subscription as well as more and more student at a pan india level who schools have yet not started online classes came on board so new segment which was never part of your addressable universe started coming into the play and that's the biggest gain over the last two months right so and what happens to the marketing money that i asked earlier where does that go you guys uh, are large advertiser you spend significant money on you know all media traditional new new media digital uh, content marketing and uh, uh, how do you see it panning out next two quarters are you going to uh, do lesser of uh, television relative to what you'll do on digital and content no so digital is always uh, dialed up and it will go forward uh, in a much much more bigger way there will be a recalibration or recalibration of uh, allocation has already happened digital would take the center stage because everything is digital now education the mode of education has changed the, the delivery of education has changed from a physical classroom to your homes so digital will play a significant role and everything around digital whether it is a content led digital conversation or a performance led digital conversation or a brand building led digital conversation that would certainly get dialed up while you will still continue looking at the other mediums the way you have always been doing have been doing in the past the air cover which is your television should continue and will continue and right. everything else depending upon uh, the micro level marketing whether it is print or radio or anything else would also be considered so more or less the budget remains uh, same some changes in the allocation right so arvind the uh, you know your brand is uh, quite interesting because you it's a qsr uh, 
but because of you know the lockdown obviously consumers have not been able to go to uh, outlets and pick up stuff you of course i i was reading somewhere you dialed up on you know uh, uh, pick up restaurants drive drive in outlets what do you do at a time like this to you know keep touch points especially because food as a category is uh, extremely sensitive you know i'm sure uh, in the first part of the lockdown especially month of april very few people really wanted to order out or you know uh, yeah uh, get yeah. food from outside right and uh, that could have uh, adversely significantly impacted you guys now right. how do you communicate one both your brand salience as well as the safety features during right. a time like this when when also not as uh, atith said uh, do too much of you know air cover uh, using television you you just have to go to consumers through uh, hyper personalization right uh, thanks for that nevel uh, hello everyone there uh, one of the things that we quickly realized very early on in this lockdown was uh, you know uh, it's very easy for brands to become tone deaf uh, in all of this scenario right when the sales are down uh, when you have to push uh, and generate demand so we quickly pivoted to a place uh, where we kind of treat uh, customers at people first and consumers second uh, what that meant was reassuring customers uh, of our safety and hygiene mcdonalds is known for its high standards of safety and hygiene but it was time to hit the story all over again uh, going back to our supply chain um, how the new contactless norms social distancing norms have been uh, implemented across supply chain in our stores so we needed to do the storytelling all over again and prove to customers uh that it's safe and hygienic food and it was also one of you know, the one of the first brands to launch contactless delivery uh and it was very much appreciated by customers and this is where uh, no food touches the hand uh, even during preparation and even at the time of uh, delivery and there is sufficient social distance uh, distancing at the time of delivery so this module was launched uh, right in february uh when when the whole uh, lockdown was just uh, you know beginning to take shape uh and that gave huge uh, you know um, you know positive impact uh, for our delivery business which picked up slowly but surely uh, based on this whole uh, assurance messaging that we were giving uh, the other uh, thing that we picked up is uh, consumers were asking brands what are you doing to the society uh, especially when there were a lot of uh, you know the stories about the underprivileged that was Uh, hitting the screens and hitting the newspaper pages um, and we dialed up our social initiatives we launched our meals for good program where we tied up with ngos across uh, the various cities uh, delivered food to the underprivileged uh, so it's been two months now that the program is still underway so in a very small way uh, we are kind of doing our bit uh, to the society uh, and this has again been up very appreciated by customers that this is a customer who's put up putting the community first uh, and at this point in time when the community needs it so i i think it's very important for brands to realize uh, you know uh, the situation we are in and 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 dial up programs accordingly uh, and i think one of the earlier panelists mentioned it and we are seeing a phase now where customers are craving for their favorites they want their alu tikki they want their maharaja mac they want their fries uh, and they want to know uh, you know Uh, how how can they pick up uh, either either take out or uh, get it home delivered uh, so so we have you know our messaging has changed in the context reassuring customers that our favorites are there uh, right uh, to order and our favorites are missing them too so i, I think in this two two and a half months we have seen at least three phases uh, three distinct phases in terms of consumer expectations and consumer sentiment and accordingly we have fashioned the communication uh you know and uh, we recognize in terms of media digital is where most of the customers have been gravitating towards uh, and that's kind of found a place in you industry you've done you you want to tell us well uh so so uh, you know one of the important uh, you know uh, levers uh, during, especially during this time when you know content uh, is uh, scarce in terms of producing uh, high quality content is focusing on user generated content um and uh, during mothers day uh, you know especially today in the context of uh, people staying at home home cooked food is what is ruling the whole uh, you know roost uh, and mothers are at the center stage right taking care of the whole household so so we kind of had uh, celebrated mothers day 
um, and as a food giver, you can't really win the battle with a mother. But but we imagined with customers how mothers would react when a kid or a youngster asks for a alu tikki or a maharaja mac in these circumstances. Um, and uh, and uh, we kind of get got a lot of user generated content on what would mothers say in this context. Um, and that ran for a few days and was very heartening for a brand to. Uh, you know, get its feedback in terms of re-engagement with customers after a brief period of time. Uh, so I, I think uh, stuff like influencer marketing and UGC are a boon in uh, in today's mm-hmm. age, and that's something that we have dialed up. Yeah, I think that's a that's a very important point. Sandeep, let me come to you. Uh, DHL would of course have customers both sides of the spectrum. You have corporate clients as well as consumers who directly reach out. So there is a B two C piece of your uh, business, and there is a B two B piece of your business. What would you do to kind of talk to both? Because you know the communication, the engagement you have with both is, you know, two very different, uh, uh, you know, areas. I think. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. I think so. Therefore, as a brand, when we are communicating, we are communicating externally, but a lot of our internal employees are also looking at what we are communicating. So, therefore, that sense of responsibility is there in our communication. And at a time like this, that we realize that this is a health crisis and it's not really a marketing opportunity. Therefore, at some level, whatever selling horses that we ride, at times we have we sort of thinking, we've thought of getting off those selling horses, we got off them and trying to sincerely embrace um, empathy. Uh, so in our tonality, in our communication, we are trying to be a genuine. Uh, we know that social distancing is not equal to customer distancing. And therefore, being in touch with the customers is far more important than ever. Fact of the matter is, for uh, know, we are uh, in international logistics, uh, and therefore, for us to function, we have to be on the ground, right? We have to be picking up, delivering, running vehicles, working at the airports, unloading our aircrafts, loading our aircrafts, building containers. There's so much work to be done, and in so much uncertainty that you come from, when we went 100% lockdown and are slowly, slowly opening up, and the, uh, the organization was fully involved in negotiating and understanding the terms and conditions and how to operate. And all this chaos to maintain a clear narrative was very, very important. I think so for what we were doing and customers were opening up too, and they wanted to export and they wanted to import and they wanted to know what's going on, right? So we kept our communication very, very short, very meaningful. And we were helping our customers pick out relevant and most important key points. But you know what? The whole suddenly it dawned to us that, look, the word state is so important, right? None of the narrative we hear from the government, from anybody gets completed until they say the states will take the final call. But there's so many states and so many rules. And there are companies like us who work across states, across so many countries. How do we understand, first of all, what states are saying? How do we cut the clutter and communicate to people so that, you know, more than the fluff, they need meaningful information right now. So I think that's what we've been doing. And the one common string which is running in our communication is that we realize that positivity is far more important in these times. So therefore, we are trying to be very, very sensitive, staying positive, trying to communicate happy and cheerful stimuli in order to drive away the attention from the negativity of the situation. So I think these are three or four tenets that are built in our tonality of our communication to our customers. And they cut across to B2B. They cut across to B2C. Many of our customers walk into our retail stores knowing extremely well that when they walk into a retail store, the safety protocols are absolutely top class. You know, and we get live feedback from our customers on how they felt when, when they walked into our store. So I think our communication is based on these facets uh, when, when we look at our customers. Fantastic. Jayam, uh, let me come to you. Uh, uh, you run a brand which is, again, very relevant during lockdown times. A lot of people, especially, you know, I've experienced this personally. A lot of people have time to focus on their personal wellness now. And you guys are very well-placed in that category. You want to tell us what you've done last two months? How have you uh, kept the brand alive and buzzing? So I think, uh, you know, the last two months have been quite eventful. If I was to just take a step back, Fraternity is an offline retail subscription product to access gyms and studios. So by nature, I think the lockdown kind of uh, 
shut all avenues of business for us. But I think what was the renewed focus that we saw is that more and more people, as you mentioned, want to get into fitness, right? Immunities become, I think, our uh, strongest line of defense. So the whole idea was, you know, for us as a team to identify what formats of fitness will be able to cater to this growing demand. And there were multiple formats. And I think what we realized is that rather than pinpointing on one format, uh, we would kind of create a skew of offerings, which would cater to different segments of consumers. So as to give an example, if you are a consumer who's just entering fitness, if, if we provide you pre-recorded videos uh, for you to kind of watch and work out, there is a high possibility that you, know, you may end up getting injured. So that's when we said that, okay, let's create a high touch model. Uh, let's empanel, you know, a few hundred thousand trainers across the, you know, across the country to say that if Jayam as a new person wants to get into fitness, how can you kind of take them through the basics of fitness at a one-on-one -on -one video call and then, you know, give them the option to kind of look at a pre-recorded video to scale up the process, right? Uh, the other thing that we did was to kind of create a, I would say, sustainable equation between supply and demand. So we uh, worked with over 2000 studios, so fitness studios in India to kind of, you know, train them towards technology uh, adaptation to, to actually take a fitness class virtually. So while fraternity earlier used to help you find a class and go to it, now the idea was how do we get the class to you, do it in a group, uh, group format base so that as a user, I get a sense of normalcy where I you know, have people working around me. There's a trainer, uh, you know, kind of looking at everything that I'm doing. And hence, uh, it, it's quite sustainable and effective for me as a user. Uh, the third thing that we did, we also created a library of pre-recorded content uh, with the aim to create scale and cater to a user base, uh, you know, which was already into fitness, wanted to kind of level up. So I mean, these are the kind of things that we've done. And I think the way we've looked at it is that, you know, um, while these cater to COVID challenges as of now, it's going to be a very interesting model in the future. So I may, I, I, I mean, I personally predict that six months down the line, you'll actually have a yoga class happening in Bandra where eight people will be attending physically right. and six people will be attending from different parts of India virtually onto that class, right? So I think it's very interesting. Uh, in, in our opinion, Given the offerings, uh, it's very important to communicate them in the right way with the user. Uh, us being a startup, you know, is not well, not that well flushed with funds in our ability to kind of use multiple channels to our advantage. So I think what we've done in that aspect is that we've kind of tried to create a lot of uh, interesting user-generated content, uh, which, you know, uh, may catch the consumer's attention. One example was a you know, there was a workout series uh, where you're not using equipment, but you're actually paralleling it to, you know, house codes. Because I think one other displacement for most urban Indians is that they're all working at home, right? Yeah. They're actually doing household work. So the idea was to create a series that when you're doing your dishes, how do you maintain fitness? When you're sweeping the house, what can you do better to also make it a fitness routine? So I think those kind of things have worked well for us, is, is my point of view. Fantastic. So let me just, uh, you know, expand the umbrella a little bit here. Content marketing obviously is a piece that resides in the large, larger marketing, uh, you know, uh, ecosystem. I was reading the walk report that day and, uh, you know, some of the points that stood out to me was one of the things that Martin Surel uh, said that in his assessment, the economic recovery from COVID will be an inverse square root, right? Which is, uh, you know, going down initially then uh, coming up a little bit and then completely plateauing off. Uh, we don't know what shape it will take in India and we hope that, uh, you know, the shape that it takes in India is more, you know, V the inverse square root. But what I want to know from uh, all of you is that if you were to, uh, like a lot of people uh, are jokingly now saying, uh, you know, BC and AC is before Corona and after Corona, right? The definition has changed. So if you were to look at the role of uh, content marketing and influencer uh, that will uh, uh, fit into a brand's uh, you know, agenda going forward, how do you think it will change from a pre-corona to a post-corona uh, world? Yeah, you want to start, Akit, and tell us? Yeah, so uh, Naval, so see, at the end of the day, what are we, what are we here for? We are here for uh, to, to try to win the trust of the consumers by providing services. Yeah. 
so as long as the consumers are moving in that space which they have actually over the last two two and a half months and more and more views and more and more content both in the in in, in english hindi and especially in the regional languages which was not that very big has taken shape there's enough and more excitement and content happening in that space which is regional languages the six top languages so it's the the whole shift or the metamorphical shift is happening from sitting at home and trying to search for content or content coming to you is always going and finding out content which is relevant for you and if that shift is continues then there would be a significant shift in the way you look at marketing you look at content marketing and the way you look at influencer marketing so it's all about the consumer journey if the audience is there this will move but if the audience is after the v shape recovery comes back and we see the traditional output what we have been seeing for decades then i don't see this is moving but it's all about where the consumer is where the audience is brands as well as brand monies will move that side how will it move so if let's say let's assume a scenario that the recovery is not v shaped and there is significant impact of corona how tell us granular points one two points as i said pre covid post covid uh, content marketing how will it uh, how will it change what are the things that you would do differently that you were doing earlier so, so the things which one would end up doing differently is looking at opportunities because today if you look at if you look at the last two and a half months and all the reports with bark and all of you guys have been uh, so, uh, submitting and publishing we have seen a significant change in the way we are spending time on entertainment we have seen the significant amount of time yes. we are spending on uh, gaming so that is a clear cut indication that numbers are moving so as a brand you need to move to that space today gaming will become a huge play as we go forward and there is enough and more content available in the gaming space so one needs to move to that level same is the case in entertainment entertainment has moved across tv but the growth has been faster on ott platforms yeah and lot of opportunities are available over there the entire uh, doordarshan piece which happened nobody expected that content to do so very well but it it was a real, real eye opener and getting advertising over there was becoming difficult in terms of cost so what has happened over here is two or three small initiatives or things in the marketplace have shifted the entire paradigm so that is the way one needs to move step by step there are no right or wrong uh, rules of there's nothing right or wrong over here you will have to evolve and you have to be nimble footed and agile and keep on looking at opportunities which are coming forward gorab you uh, your company manages brands across sectors and you've been uh, for uh, a few years few years now you've been uh, significantly investing in the space so what's your learning as i said from a pre covid to a post covid world in terms of usage of content marketing influencer marketing what are the things that uh, uh, will change you are on mute i think you need to unmute garab sorry i think now uh, it's a very pertinent question that i struggle with every single day because every opportunity like this one you know, churchill said something very interesting that never waste a good uh, crisis now in a crisis like this uh, there is also time to really uh, really put your thinking hat on and imagine what scenarios could be i think the biggest learning is that in in a scenario when something like this happens you should never be fixated to any scenario that's the that's the first thing but i'll tell you two three trends that for me were very uh, very striking uh, now if you look at china for example which all markets started opening up you saw people revert to same behavior almost immediately some things come back so rapidly that it shocks you that yeah. uh, was this the same uh, place uh, just a week back which was actually empty is now crowded with people restaurants were uh, chock a block full and you need, and were going at a premium now if you look at india uh, and if you start looking at green zones red zones and the containment zones the the first lead indicator that actually people are getting out of homes in a in a massive way is the amount of tv time drop that you see in green zone so what we uh, you know it is amazing that things that we imagine and you i mean interesting you mentioned the inverse square root curve as you start getting distant from uh, from a event like this uh, the memory also starts fading and uh, right. and and you start uh, going back to common behaviors but i want to take two three points here i think certain things will have changed forever and will will uh, be so next time that you are in a bank queue you won't have the person standing behind you in india really pushing you right into the counter 
that is something that we took for granted all this while, right? So you'll you'll suddenly see that there's a certain respect for uh, for distance and personal distance that will come in, which again opens up massive opportunities in terms of uh, of uh, marketing, in terms of messaging, in terms of keeping this sensitivity going. I think certain hygiene categories have come to stay. I mean, what uh, you know. As they say, very interestingly, that uh, you know, it takes a crisis to uh, like this one to really skyrocket some of the categories that we uh, that would have taken years to develop. Some of them are on this here. I mean, for example, uh, you know, sanitizers. Uh, you know, you never imagined uh, the first few days people who were being given sanitizers. Some of people were drinking that sanitizer. So you had to stop people from drinking a sanitizer. Uh, so now everybody knows. Even in uh, rural villages, you say, hear people what uh, uh, and people understand what sanitizer is. I used to be a marketing manager on Purit, and it took me a lifetime to explain what a virus is. Now nobody needs explanation on what a virus is. You know, you you, you are deep in India, and you and you listen to consumers, and you realize that virus people understand suddenly. So certain things have changed forever uh, post COVID. So including things like sensitivity to hygiene. Uh, distance learning, whether it's physical education, uh, whether it is uh, you know fitness, uh, like fraternity is talking about, whether it is uh, you know what uh, what Baiju is doing. I think this whole piece of distance, uh, and I learned a very interesting word from my teammate, uh, you know, uh, today when we were talking, which was to say that it, you become almost uh, distance agnostic to a certain kind of work uh, work category. For example, what will change forever? Is uh, is possibly this thinking that you need to physically be in a room to have a conference like this? Imagine what it does to cut down costs. I think the other piece is that which will not change so easily and take a lot of effort for us to change is are people ready to give value for this to the extent they were to uh, were ready to give for physical uh, intervention. So let's say if a similar session were to be done with or a or a learning session or a fitness session with the same amount of fee. That you had uh, for a physical uh, intervention, let's say what a cure fit like uh, scenario did, will that continue, or will people still want physical evidence of that service? I think that I'm not so sure that will change so so much. But for me, uh, what will my hypothesis in the scenario is that a lot of things that are uh, that today are pretty locked down will come back rapidly, but certain behaviors will stay as remnants for us for a long time to come. And uh, and that is including things like sensitivity to physical space, hygiene, sensitivity, sensitivity to uh, to things like uh, you know need for uh, for financial well-being. For example, a lot of people are suddenly finding that uh, you are not uh, possibly that well geared for a crisis like this one. So suddenly, but does that impact <laughs> doubling down on uh, uh, influencer marketing, doing more online content? In a way, yes. Uh, I think uh, again, uh, Naval. What's happening is that uh, we need to again say which consumer what content, right? If you look at India, and you we go and start tearing India, uh, tear up India in various uh, various segments, and what you realize is the top 10% segment is almost 38, 39% of all consumption in the country, and that 10% segment in the country is is essentially not on uh, on a traditional medium. So of course. Uh, there, the doubling down of uh, of content is massive, uh, massively critical yes. because in a time like this, they found that they have inter- entertainment and choices on a fingertip. But what will change is the influencer marketing bit, where the one vector that will come in very powerfully is in this. Uh, you know, the the paradox in a situation like this is there's so much of content, and yet when you sit down with the remote control of, of a TV, uh, you don't. Uh, you find very difficult to decide what to watch. That's when you turn to your traditional, uh, uh, usual thing, or word of mouth, turning to a friend. What should I watch? Or what, on that WhatsApp group, can you tell me top ten series? How often have you seen that? I think that's the void that influencers will fill in a very, very big way. From taking that choice overload and and cutting through that clutter to give you those two or three or five things right. that are interesting and positive. I think that's the space yeah. that influencers could. Agree. How does a, a media tech company like yours? Ca- uh, latch on to that opportunity. Gaurav is very right, and and so all of us have experienced it. I have spent like hours arguing with my wife in front of a TV, and then we just walked off because you know we haven't managed to agree on what to watch. That that and, nobody help you. That can help you with the uh, wife is a tough one. Yeah, that's a that, tough text. Uh, and that's a big opportunity for OTD platforms. Uh, if you can hook the consumer immediately, then obviously time spent goes up. 
Absolutely, absolutely. I think, uh, uh, Navin, I would go back to the point of hyper-personalization where the more you understand the consumer and his behavior, and this is uh, behavior which, he, which is there both on the platform and off the platform, it helps in uh, giving him uh, with the content choices that he would ideally want to consume and this is this so we are we as a brand our motive is to be tuned to you which is which which is almost like being a reflection of who you are and who you aspire to be so as an app we want to understand you and that is when consumer profiling helps that is when personalization helps and like you were saying see uh, this is the new norm and uh, it is the age of being agile as uh, Content marketing uh, has been very natural to our to our organization. We work with influencers day in day out, both for our uh, shows uh, and their marketing, as well as with a lot of partners to uh, to promote their uh, products and brands. And what we've seen is that content marketing is on a is on a high. Uh, the consumption on OTT is uh, ever increasing. Uh, people are coming to the OTT platform and accessing the uh, content through di different devices. So the consumer behavior has shifted. What has happened is that it's not just restrict a, a person who was watching it on mobile is also now watching it on the big TV. He has shifted from maybe a cable television onto a OTT platform. The same ID and password is being utilized on five devices by five family members on to a mobile, a iPad, or onto a, a big screen. So, and that is where I think hyper-personalization helps. That is why, uh, where profiling helps in terms of uh, recommendation engines that can help you in uh, providing you the right content for you out of the plethora of content that is. Right. Uh, Nipun, uh, let me come to you now. What about you? I mean, you, you guys have been investing significantly across media again. Uh, and it's a very interesting category. Uh, it's been a high growth category last two years. You've used television in a big way, brand ambassadors, you've done uh, the big ticket sporting properties, uh, you've done influencer marketing, content marketing. What changes for you? I mean, when you go back, say, uh, into your office uh, a month, hopefully from now, what would have changed in your marketing mix, uh, especially when it came to using influencers, using digital online content? Okay. Uh, so, uh, Naval, I will look at it from two ways. Uh, first, uh, the first way is all of us, you know, this lockdown, uh, this was more out of compulsion than choice for anybody. So it's like an elastic, which is stretched. Now the question is when this, when this force is removed, will the elastic go back to its original position or not? And somewhere uh, I, you know, I, I concur with a part of what Gaurav Jeet said, uh, which is that, how much will actually change uh, in consumers' behaviors uh, is, uh, I think it's, it's for us to wait and watch. And because it is natural for us to say, yeah, uh, a lot of things will change. There will be a new normal. Yeah, these are the, you know, these are the buzzwords these days. But uh, whenever in the last 10 days, when we've seen the, the markets open up and again, people you know, flocking to stores, uh, buying smartphones uh, or starting to buy smartphones, what we have realized is that as soon as the force which was pulling people away, the force is removed. Uh, it is not that suddenly there is an absolutely new normal. Yeah. So I would rather, you know, refrain from saying that, yeah, there is hundred percent, there is going to be a new normal. Uh, while of course, you know, some behavior somewhere there, there is, uh, there is going to be change in terms of, you know, our hygiene habits, our, you know, social distancing habits, being more aware of, of crowded places. So those things will change, but in terms of buying habits, uh, I think we, we still need to uh, to be sure as soon as the lockdown lifts. I think uh, second, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Second, go ahead. Uh, second, in terms of uh, marketing, there are two two aspects. Uh, one, Atiti also touched upon, uh, which is uh, where is our consumer accordingly? We have to be there. Uh, so so that, that's a function of you know where our consumer is. And second is what kind of monies do we have? On the second part, as all businesses or most businesses have suffered, uh, depending on, on the range of decline, but all businesses have suffered. So keeping that in mind, marketing budgets will, of course, uh, will have to be re-looked at uh, and re-apportioned to give the maximum bank for buck. Yes, that's true. Uh, one of the other things I was reading was that post-COVID, the increased power and sway of e-commerce companies and 
the uh, new learning brands will uh, i think that is a that is a unchallenged reality e-commerce companies will have a stronger uh, you know uh, say in the distribution ecosystem and all of the brands who are anyway learning how to kind of uh, deal with them yesterday i was ordering a hair trimmer for myself and uh, I spent because it was a first time experience. I spent a good part of an hour just trying to figure out what to buy, and it had the best brands, the known brands, and some of the unknown brands which are highly rated on Amazon, right? Who have four and a half, five star ratings, who are you know good on pricing, good on value. So it's a very interesting challenge for brands, and I think that is going to also determine uh, 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 you know how the marketplace uh, uh, you know evolves in the next few years. because challenger brand new brands if they get their e-commerce strategy right they will be able to give uh, the legacy and the established brand uh, a run for their money yeah see here again nabil uh, i'd say uh, while <laughs> that seems to be uh, you know like again um, par for course when it comes to new normal but and i'll give you one example we uh, in terms of smartphone industry i can tell you uh, the market is split between 65% offline 65 to 70% offline and around 30% is online uh, and uh, what we did was we took this initiative of uh, vivo smart retail wherein what we are saying is you want to buy from offline store but you don't want to go uh, to to an offline store so we will arrange a call where the the vivo brand ambassador will explain you all the features help you decide the phone and the retailer will deliver the phone to your home so so the comfort and uh, especially in the smartphone category which you know people the average ticket price is say 15000 rupees and you will make this purchase once every one and a half to two years it's not that you will every day go and you know buy a smartphone so people still trust uh, the the physical presence of a store uh, touching great. and feeling uh, the device comparing it with three other phones Uh, opening the camera checking the camera then making the making their decision so uh, again category to category uh, and person to person is is the way it will evolve to uh, and even with this vivo smart retail in, in around 15 days we've seen 30000 plus customers uh, reaching out to us uh, and you know giving their queries so uh, so i would again say whatever we are saying it depends once the lockdown lifts uh, this elastic how back how much back it will go back to its original space right, right. so uh, i am told time is up so i have one last question i'll take that around and because you know you guys all run very large brands across significant key important categories uh, media spends has been uh, you know a very big uh, uh, you know part of the uh, equation for the uh, advertising and the media business uh, it is tough to say right now what happens to you know overall marketing budgets and the money you are spending on media but a lot of people in the advertising and the media system, oh, ecosystem are hopeful that over the next 2 to 3 months majority of the spends are uh, going to come back if i were to go, go around and ask you of course it's not possible as i said to put a number if i were to go around and ask you what is the month that you would look at from now when you would say your media spend will be indexed back to 100 so for example if you were doing 100 in september last year it would again be you know 100 in september this year obviously april may have been two kind of washout months except for maybe hl uh, i can't imagine anybody else uh, having done more than 20% of what they had done in april may last year so looking from now we are almost on 1st of june uh, looking on from now what would be what would be the month where you would say okay my uh, media spend uh, would roughly uh, index back to 100 arvind you want to start this sure uh, nevel uh, i would say 12 to 18 months um, and that's the time period we are looking at uh, okay. because when you were asking the earlier question what's going to change right uh, if is demand going to come back yes demand is to going to come back but uh, the nature of the demand will increase uh, people are seeking more and more convenience uh, which means for example our dine in uh, business will take a longer time to come back whereas mm-hmm. the delivery and the take out business will be fast in higher demand Uh, digitally enabled and so on so forth so so that's the prognosis yeah right and that's 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 a pretty uh, you know uh, long time frame because you know that's right even the severity of the cut 12 12 18 months is pretty pretty that's long that's right that's right because the nature of uh, dining is you know you kind of meet people you grow in groups uh, I, i think uh, and what we are seeing very clearly now is you know convenience is a big driver of choice uh as opposed to you know uh the older channels being preferred so we see this shift and hence the 12 to 18 months 
What about you, Atit? No, we are already at 105 in the last two months. Oh, fantastic! That's good news. So there has been no change because the category is growing, and as I said in the first time when you asked me, uh, more and more people are adopting to online learning because schools are shut and they are the last things to open up. And this is going to be the new approach, the blended approach of learning at home and learning from school is going to continue and it's going to stay for good, as far India is concerned and practically everywhere in the world. So there has absolutely been no uh, change for us in terms of advertising. Marketing spends. We are at the same levels what it was earlier drawn up before the lockdown started. Great. And Nipun, what about uh, Vivo? Yeah. Uh, if uh, if there is no second wave, uh, I think, and that's a very important uh, point. If there is no second wave and things only uh, look northwards from here, then I think in around uh, six months' time. Uh, in around six months' time, uh, we should be seeing a business, you know, pre-COVID, uh, and therefore mm-hmm. uh, marketing budgets and marketing spends also being aligned accordingly. Also, right. around six months from now, uh, we will be hitting the festival season. Yes. Uh, so, so from that time, uh, hopefully, things are much better than they are right now. Brilliant. What about you, Sleep? You can hear me. Yes. You can. All right. So, I think. So, so with the current estimates, right? So, uh, if you look at global markets and globalization, demand globalization is the real thing. I mean, that's the real demand. Uh, U.S. is going to degrow by minus eight percent. Europe is going to degrow by minus six. The India numbers, people are talking between minus five and minus six, and that is when we are in the current environment. We don't know whether we've seen the worst phase yet, and I wish and pray this is there's no worst phase. There's no second peak, etc. But the fact of the matter is that demand is really gone southwards. Um, India exports were down by 60% uh, in the last month. Therefore, by current estimates, anything between 12 to 18 months is a, is is a uh, uh, is optimistic to say that demand will come back to normal. I, I agree with the uh, square root point, but maybe the altitudes can be a little different. This could be the square root. And therefore, if the demand and the business is going to take time to come back to normal, the marketing spends will automatically yes. take a, a, a different way altogether. And therefore, the the way the spend is allocated really will have to evolve um, because the spends are going to reduce. And I think this is going to take quite some time, maybe 18, 24 months, and we'll wait and watch how it goes. Right. Fair enough. Jayam, uh, what about uh, you? Uh, you guys are in... Uh sort of growth trajectory you 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 have a business to build so uh, can we assume that uh, uh, i mean of course there is no indexing uh, reference here uh, are you planning to up your uh, you know presence in terms of promotions marketing yeah no i think uh, i think it depends on two factors uh, one would be whether virtual fitness can actually move from just engaging users to 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 our ability to monetize it right i think this is something that you know, it's been an unanswered question in the last decade. No one has really been able to monetize virtual fitness as much as other categories. So I think uh, that would be one of the most important questions that defines our spends. Uh, if I was to just purely look at it from the retail offline space, I think that would definitely, it would take six to nine months for consumers to start feeling safer to go to a gym, you know, and you know, kind of go to a fitness studio or call a personal trainer at home. I think these are the two factors which would uh, somewhere impact how we would spend our money. Yeah. Abhi, you guys have spent uh, over the last 18 months significant money on outdoor money, which is all kind of, uh, you know, uh, right now uh, not in action. And uh, that money also depends upon people coming back on road, traveling, going to work, going to meet others. And it's still some time away. Where would you redeploy all of that money in the next two quarters? So uh, the category that we are in, uh, our media spends uh, are the same as they were earlier. Uh, in fact, if I have to scale it, it would be now 105 if it was 100 earlier. So we're uh, spending more in this time. Uh, we've reallocated the bu- budgets. Yes, the media mix has been uh, relooked at. Uh, much more ROI and much more uh, measurement driven platforms are being looked at. And also from a perspective of whether whether they are contextual at, do during these times or not. 
so most of the monies have been deployed over digital and over uh, television which was allocated onto other uh, outdoor media as well at the moment right so gaurav i'll let you have the last word obviously hul has been continuing to spend through the crisis as well as we have seen from a lot of bark and tam data uh the question i have is like other categories hul is also impacted in terms of the volume value growth i was looking at some crystal reports that day which said uh you know fmcg growth this year could end up being half of what was being projected earlier does that also mean that uh, you will go conservative with your marketing spends next three quarters or will that be business as usual i think the, the way we uh, look at it is that uh, at least we are trying to do is to match physical availability with uh, with mental reach and what's happening uh, on a lot of these things is that such a dynamic piece uh, novel uh, that's very difficult to say listen this is what uh, would be our media spend the reason for that is that in our case the categories that straddle a very wide range uh, right down to something that's absolute essential for ig into going down to something as uh, as normal uh, uh, as it gets as let's say lakme colors so it really depends on how uh, how markets open up how consumers react and what kind of uh, kind of uh, availability is possible uh, in a in a time like this so there is uh, and hence uh, it is a very very dynamic piece and we'll continue to invest uh, in line with what consumer behavior is so if if they can get access to products uh, we will continue building uh, our brands but what is very clear historically is that in times like this uh, bigger brands come out much better stronger uh and uh, selling brands remain uh, uh remain uh, powerful i think the challenge in a period like this is how do you mean selling with such a large fragmentation and audience uh, typologies across and with tv itself uh, booming the way it is uh and again going through that throw in places where uh, we are starting to open up market so i think the, the dynamism of this industry requires us to be on the ball in terms of which consumer segment needs what uh, what medium uh, media mix to reach to them and uh, constantly calibrate our plans in line with physical availability and uh, and as it comes back to normal and as uh, uh, as uh, as uh, novel was saying as uh, sorry nipun was saying that it really depends on how the how this whole uh, whole second wave uh, god forbid plays out so there's so many moving parts now and it's it be a real uh, hazard to guess anything but i think the uh, way we will approach it is that we constantly be consumer centric there's some markets where things are back to normal where we are aggressively uh, uh, building our brands and continue to do so in some places consumers desire the product uh, and hence we are building the demand for it when for when things are normal in some cases we are not able to produce uh, enough to fulfill the demand that there is so you want to possibly uh, calibrate our advertising so there's so many scenarios across the 50 or brands that we have in market in given time so it is not a easy answer to give but suffice to say the only way to play this is to really uh, shadow the consumer and uh, how consumers are behaving and and be salient when they are uh, uh, when you have opportunity to be seen fantastic thank you for the candid answer thank you so much uh, let's hope that uh, it turns out to be a v shaped recovery the so called second wave is as not as severe and uh, i think we are uh, we are looking at uh, a future scenario which is more hopeful than the last two months businesses will be back on track some categories obviously will be challenged but uh, the pessimistic pessimistic scenario hopefully will not play out uh, we will be somewhere between the most optimistic and the most pessimistic scenario as happens in most crises thank you for your very candid and uh, insightful thoughts all of you thank you avi gaurav jayam Atit, Sandeep, and Nipun uh, for being part of this panel on a Friday evening. Uh, we wish you all luck and hope to see you soon next time. Kya thi ho to you? Thank you, Naval. Thank you, team. Thank you. Thank you, Naval. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 Thank you, Kathy. Before we close the content dam, uh, I would like to leave all of you with just one little thought. You know, there's a uh, quote by Albert Einstein which says, "In the middle of 
difficulty lies opportunity. And all that we've heard today in the Content Jam uh, conference is that let us not be opportunistic, but let us all be more empathetic towards uh, our viewers, towards our consumers, towards the fraternity that we work in, towards each and every lives that we touch. I think empathy is going to take us a long way. So while you make content, don't forget this. And uh, let us all move forward with the hope and positivity that we all strive with. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us for E4M Content Jam, the content marketing gig in its third edition. It went virtual and coming to all your screens. So thank you for all of you who joined us till the end. Don't forget to tweet us your responses, your feedback, suggestions, comments with our hashtag E4M webinar and E4M content jam. This is me, Khyati Kawa, signing off. Thank you. I was your virtual host for this content jam. See you again. Thank you, Khyati. God bless you.